I'm Julie Meller. I'm a teacher on the Applied Arts degree course at Glyndor University. Uh, today I'm going to be demonstrating fabricating a metal vessel to the first year students. The base isn't going to be a simple soldered base. I'm actually going to use the fly press as part of the stages. I'm going to have a domed base. And because of that, I've kind of based it around a suitable size. So because I've got a die cut to this size, I'm going to use this. So now you worked out an appropriate size um, of cylinder. Can you, see, can you see the numbers in there? Yes. That's me working out the width of that, which was 4.45 mil times 3.14 to get a circumference, approximately. And um, that was this strip. Well, I've prepped that so that we can make sure that gets done this morning while you're here. So it's the importance of maquettes. This is only a simple, this is as basic as you can get, but you can see why it's really important. That's why I always go on about the paper maquettes. Yeah. It's so useful. So I've got that now as a reference. So that's all prepped. We're doing it all in brass, and I want to show you annealing brass. So I'm going to show you this. This is ready done. This is the next one I'm going to show you. But we're going to just watch this being annealed so you can anneal brass properly as well as the copper and gilding metal that you've already done. So I've cut and measured this accurately because we want to do as little work as possible. So if you make your paper maquette, you can cut your strips accurately, not a huge piece of metal, soft flame, yeah, softish flame, half soft, and it's all about heating the piece of metal up the same all over. You don't have any hot spots, so don't use a hard flame and suddenly heat it up. You want all the molecules to heat up and start relaxing, as we say. So it's already changing colour. But there's a colour difference with brass when we anneal it. We're going to get it a little bit hotter looking than you normally do with your other pieces. It's kind of more of an orangey colour. You see that? And I'm drawing this away. As soon as you see it, don't pull the flame away and finish. Let it soak at that temperature, but you don't want to get higher and higher temperature because it will melt. So I'm just kind of encouraging it. So you could call it soaking it at that temperature like we do with kilns where you leave it at a certain temperature for a while. It's a similar thing, but you're controlling it by hand with the torch. That will do. I'll leave that to cool a second. And we'll go back to the piece that I've already done. And we're going to shape that one, okay? I'm going to create our little cylindrical shape by using this. Can you see? So always from the side, as usual. Otherwise, you send things out the vise. So we want to come in from the side. I'm just going to start with the ends. I'm looking to get this vertical so that the two match. The main thing is going to be the ends again. I can form the shape again afterwards, that's not a problem. But I want to get the ends right. Unlike the small pieces that you've done before, what I'm going to do is hold this in place. This is really going to want to spring back when I add heat to it and open up that join. So we're going to keep it together. I'm going to use some binding wire. And the thicker you go with your, um, this is 0.9 mil sheet. So the thicker you go, the more, um, the more you'll notice the difference in if it's not accurate. Because this is tapered, obviously. And so I'm following this line. I don't really want to follow the shape because this is going to start making a tapered cylinder and I don't want that. Yeah. So now I can bind it and we can solder this one now. So we've got our borax, which is a flux. flux. I'm going to put this on first, and then I'm going to hold it together with this binding wire. The solder will run where the flux is. So if you're neater and not as messy, then hopefully you won't get solder everywhere. So I'm going to put two pieces on it. I'm going to put a little bit in the end here twist in the end and this will help you tension it this is really useful this is the little thing that you forget and you wonder next time why 
it hasn't maybe hold something together as well. You don't always have to do it, but especially on a cylindrical shape, this is really, really useful. So what you want is to get it really close. There's no point if there's lots of kinks and things in it, because they'll just expand when you heat it, and it'll be as if, and it will get bigger, the wire will, and the thing will open up anyway. So you want it really close. We're going to make it closer in a minute. If you get some parallel pliers, this will help. You can grip that. You see that? If you grip that, we can tighten that. You can tighten this side also. Do you see why it's useful? You can tighten or loosen those sides. So like with everything, with soldering, everything super clean. So that's clean, that's borax, that's protected. When you come to the solder, um, I'm going to use hard and just check it because if you've not if you just come to it fresh if it's your workshop you can look after your stuff how you want but it might not have been used and it might be out in the atmosphere and because it's mostly silver so it's a metal it can get dirty and oxidize so you can either just put it in the silver pickle or give it a little rub with some white wool just make sure that's clean make sure it's rolled a little bit thinner it's going to be easier to cut with your snips yeah so i'm going to use some hard so we'll take this over to the hearth these bits I'm going to heat the borax, then I'm going to put some tiny bits of solder on and I'm going to heat from underneath and I'm putting the solder on the inside so there'll be less cleaning up on the outside. Um, also means that I can get to it, you could put it either way, you put it on the outside and try and heat from underneath. Um, I'm going to sit it like this, put it here and heat from the outside. So to get at it I'm going to use this trivet. I'm going to pre-cut some solder. So again, I tend to come down the lengths like this, and when I cut across, I'll hold it with my finger. So I'm going to... Now, we need a bit more solder than you can use to because the length of this seam. So I'm going to put small pieces, but I'm going to put more of them. Drop those into the solder. They need to be coated in flux as well. Soft flame, we're going to warm the whole thing up first and we're going to heat the borax until it glassifies. Then I'm going to add the solder. If you start from the back again, again like with the ring, it wants to expand. So if I start there, if it is going to move, the movement will send it in the right direction it will send the seam further together rather than driving the seam apart. So that's where it's now, it's got bubbly, it's sunk down again. And so the solder must touch both sides of the seam both pieces of metal that are going to be joined. So you see the heat, the residual heat's already bubbling that borax up, which is good really, because it's kind of sticking in place. I'm gonna to have to be careful, when I put this back on now, the heat, I don't want to blow those away with the, the fierceness of that. Okay, now I can get hard flame. You can see that, guys, from both directions. And I'm gonna heat from underneath. I don't want the really hot flame to hit the solder, because it, it might just boil up. I'm trying to get the metal to get to the right temperature to melt the solder. So as soon as it gets really hot, you'll get used to moving. You see how I'm still looking at it, but I've moved that flame away. Get the flame away as quickly as possible. Do you want to have a little look at that while it's on here? Careful, it's hot. We're going to shape the bottom slightly of this container, this sort of canister shape. It's just gonna have a little radial edge, but I'm not gonna do that until I've made the base on the fly press, because I'm going to bring it in gradually until it matches the shape. So it's worth me doing this bit first. Mm -hmm. So this is pre-annealed, so this is soft, so same process as for shaping that first piece, but uh, we've already done that. So we can go straight over to the fly press and get this base, I'll bring this too. If you had something that you want to be um, pressed really deeply, the metal sheet needs to be fairly thick because this is a method of forming that stretches metal 
Um, this is only going to have a shallow um, sort of uh, stretch, but I think the piece is going to be really nice to have a nice weighty base on it. Uh, and you want to be, this is 45 mil diameter, so you always want to be about a good 15 mil all the way around bigger than your hole. Because it's stretching it, it's going to pull it into the hole. So I'm going to put this under here, and I'm just going to line that up so that the press is central. So this is quite important. This bit needs to line up centrally because otherwise you'll get an asymmetric um, compression on it. I'm going to do this by eye. What you could do, you could pre-mark this out with masking tape if you're worried about sitting this in the right place, but I'm going to do this by eye. That should be fine. Okay. And obviously you need something to sit in that shape. Um, to begin with, I'm just going to use these. So again, don't let go of it. Let it come round. And then you're doing it with your own compression. So I'm just going to do that a little bit. At this stage, what I want to do is kind of encourage this so I could show you this little wrinkle. Can you see it? It's right around this size here. You're going to have to come in close. Can you see that, Jack, as well? You see that wrinkle there? Yeah. Yeah. If I put this on here, over that, it's a bit small, but it should do. Ideally, if this was a bit bigger, but I'm going to cut this circle out so it should be all right. Still need to protect this by putting that under here. So don't put steel on steel. And I'm just going to flatten it a little bit, see if that helps flatten it. So I want a really nice flat surround around the outside of this, because that's going to help me when I construct the base. So now I've done that, that's taken that little wrinkle out. And so now that I've got this ready, before I solder it, I'm going to bring that radial curve in so it meets that bit inside. So you could use any of the sort of rounded, smooth steel stakes if you found the right sort of shape. But this steel doming punch should work if I hold it at the right angle. So, let's see, I'm going to just do this by eye. I'm going to use this as the base. And I want to bring it over the curve, so I'm going to do it from the side like this. I wouldn't normally sort of put a, um, a stake in at this angle. But I want to see if I can watch this curve and bring it round. I want it really to sit right up against this curve. So I'm nearly there. Okay. Can you see? Yes. So I'm just going to quickly flat that back on some wet and dry. And then we can fix this together. And I could show you how you set this up to solder the base. So, it's a little sprinkle in here. So, a little bit of water on the wet and dry, figure of eight. Starting to, can you see where it's shiny and not yeah. shiny? Yeah. And that's where it's starting to get flat. Mm -hmm. So this is quite handy really because having that little shape, when we can solder this, we'll, we'll kind of give it a little seat to sit in. Oh, yes. You know, things move about. Just gonna have a look. Checking that that is good and flat all the way around. Not bad. So what you can do is, we can use binding wire again and I'm going to give it something to grip onto. So if I just choose somewhere, it could be the corners, could be here, doesn't really matter. Make a little snip there. We're going to wrap it up like a present. So again, around this, this is what we're going to solder. So same thing, going to heat and have it raise up so I can get at it from both angles. Okay, they're prepped. So again, going to heat this, add those like last time. Same thing, a lot more metal, 
so more heat or it might take a little bit longer okay turntable so that I can access the thing so we'll soon know if I've uh, got the binding wire tight enough if it comes apart the metal underneath is thicker so it will absorb more heat so I'll have to focus quite a lot of the heat on the base for a start so can you see that bubbling up that borax the flux So you can see where the borax is, it hasn't changed colour, but you've got this really nice dark oxidisation elsewhere. Do you want to get in and see where I'm putting these bits? But they've got to be touching both surfaces yeah. again, mm -hmm. which is quite nice on this because it has a little undercut, so it's kind of easy to tuck them. You want to shove those right in there, yeah? Now the fun bits. Direct the heat where you want the solder to flow. But you're always looking for the temperature of the metal. You can see the silver and chase it around with the flame until you see that the whole seam has connected. I think that's it. And what you're looking for is to pull that heat round so that it all joins up. Leave that settle a little bit before I pick it up. So if you want to have a quick look now before I cool it and we pickle it, if you see where still that lovely gold brassy colour, that is where the borax has kept it clean for soldering. This is this whole thing about keeping everything clean, so your water clean. Once you've used it, if you dip something into it to clean off the oxide, if you're gonna set up and do some more soldering with it, go and get some clean water because it'll have bits of oxide in it. I'll cool it, we'll take that binding wire off. So let's get these off present wrapping and that is cleaned in here so what we're going to do next with that is I'll wash, wash it off start cutting the base okay. and that piece will be ready that that apart from all the finishing and the sanding and everything that will kind of be it for this piece 